Hi, everybody. This is Jackie from the Let's Talk Tefl podcast. And joining me today is Stuart from Tefl Lemon. Hi, Stuart. Hi, Jackie. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? Really good. Thank you. It's uh, super hot here in Xi'an today. I think it's it's probably maybe a record. It's uh, over 40 degrees Celsius <gasps> today. So, Oh, no. Are you staying inside I'm the entire day? Out. <laughs> yeah, it's just really oppressive heat it's like uh, super super hot but really glad to be on your pod oh yeah thanks so much for joining us so we're going to talk today about your top five ESL activities for young learners and um, yeah I'm excited about it because I think a lot of the people that listen to this podcast and that teach English around the world are teaching young learners so any kind of practical tips and advice and games and that kind of thing that we can give them I love um, to talk about that kind of stuff yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's always been a passion of mine teaching young learners. Uh, there's definitely an art to it. Um, there's a lot of when you're teaching young learners, as a lot of your listeners will know, you you make tons of mistakes. And it's only through making those mistakes, reflecting back, and uh, thinking about, oh, if I if I could do that again, I would have done this. And lots of trial and error, um, lots of moments of joy, and uh, yeah, it's something I really enjoy uh, teaching, teaching young children, using really good, meaningful activities in the classroom. And so before we jump into the activities, um, where have you taught English before? I know that you're in China right now, but have you been to other countries or have you just been in China? For yeah, the- mainly. Well, yeah, pretty predominantly all in China. Uh, I've taught a little bit in the UK when I would come back to visit family. I'd do like kind of summer camps and things like that, but that was really for older children. So pretty much uh, all of my teaching career, I've been teaching for 20 years now, uh, 20 years this year, um, and all of it really has been here in China. That's amazing. That's a long time. I stayed in Korea for 10 years in public. <laughs> wow, that was a really long time to stay in Korea. But yeah, 20 years is, is a long time for sure. Um, yeah, and it's been 20 wonderful years as well. I've really enjoyed every single moment of it. There's uh, uh, lots of stories, lots of amazing times in the classroom, lots of seeing lots of children growing up. You know, it's it's been great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll definitely have to have you back on the podcast to talk all things like ESL teaching jobs in China, life in China, that kind of thing. I don't think we've had anyone on the podcast um, actually that that has talked about that. So yeah, that would be great. So, but a future, a future day. ESL activities for kids. So your first one is called The Box. So what is that one all about? Yeah, so The Box is basically, um, it's really important to teach vocabulary. Um, Like, uh, the more um, students they have to learn this vocabulary all the time. And uh, so it's very important to recycle uh, vocabulary as much as possible. Um, We really need to aim to give students as many encounters with words as we can. So a little little tip is get your students to have like a vocabulary diary. So they, you know, after your class, because they might not have they might not have uh, a class with you for like another week. So in the week they can revisit that vocabulary and just encourage encounters with vocabulary as much as possible. And that gives your students the very best chance of recall later on. Uh, That's just a quick tip. But the the box is basically about vocabulary acquisition. And so you might have a box around at home, like an old shoe box or like an old delivery package or something. And these are great to bring to the classroom. So from home, bring in an old box. If you've got time, you can you can decorate it or whatever. Um, and make a little slot, a little kind of a hole that's big enough to get a hand into. And inside the box, you can write down 20 of the most recent words or words that you want to review. Um, you can make little picture cards if you want to um, and pop them into the box. Bring it into the class, divide your class into two or three teams, and then uh, the first student from the first team needs to come out, put the hand into the box and pull out uh, a word, and they need to try to explain or mime that word to their team, and their team has to try to say what the word is. Uh, Each player gets kind of 60 seconds or 30 seconds 
um, and then uh, sound, the, sound the buzzer. And then it's the, the, the team, as many words that they have, they get to keep those words. And then it's the next team's turn. Um, and that's it. Keep going until there's no more words in the box. And it's a really good way for your students to um, recycle words, um, more encounters with these words. And a good way for you to get rid of a box at home that's kind of doing nothing as well. <laughs> exactly. And I, it's, it's quite similar to like Pictionary or is it? Oh, no, uh, charade, charades. However, I love that you um, use like the most recent words that students have been studying. I think that definitely just like levels it up into this like very, very helpful um, kind of ESL game. That's it. And it's uh, the main thing, again, is um, encounters with words, you know, because it's been shown that children need to encounter words at least six times to really uh, recall it long term. So if you're um, in your class, uh, if you know if they're looking at words just two or three times, there's very little chance that they will recall that later on down the line. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of recycles and it gives that the box, you know, it just gives it that, that air of intrigue and, and interest to, that, that children love. Mm -hmm. So it's a yeah. really great way of, um, of kind of getting vocabulary into your classroom. For sure. It creates a bit of excitement in the classroom. And um, I am all about review. I talk about that all the time in my books and my videos. Everything I do, I always talk about review because I think the exact same thing you do. People have to see words like, I don't know, six, 10, 20 times before it's actually accessible and just at the top of their mind and they don't have to like dig deep and struggle to try to remember something. And I never assume that really students are gonna like go home and study um, things in between classes. So I try to give students the best opportunity in my classes to actually like attain that vocabulary okay. or that grammatical construction or whatever by reviewing like a million times. That's the thing, because when you're teaching children, um, like here in China, quite often you'll teach children, let's say in the evenings or the weekends, because they go to school Monday to Friday in their normal schools. So they might only come in to you once a week for like an hour. And then as soon as they're out of the door, they might put their book in their bag and go to other classes and do other things. And then they haven't, they haven't looked at any of your work for like a whole week. So if you can try to encourage like a, a climate of, of understanding why they need to do this and get their parents in on board as well and encourage this culture of re -look, uh, looking back at the vocabulary that they've learned in your classes outside of your classes, then you'll see much better language results and also higher levels of motivation as well once they're in your class as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. All right, let's move on to your second activity, the ball and sack. What is that one all about? Yeah, so this this is, a, a, again, it's really simple. You uh, go into your classroom and you bring in with you a ball and a bag. Um, lots of the best activities for children are ones that require very little prep. Um, you know, teachers are really busy. So uh, this, is, this is great for that. Just bring in a bag and a ball. And inside the bag, you can put um, either picture cards for lower levels. You can have uh, questions that you've been um, recently learning. Um, print them out, cut them up, uh, put them into the bag. Put in you know, maybe like 15 or 20 or something. Divide your class into two groups and have them form two circles. Give one circle the bag and give the other circle the ball. Um, for this, you're going to need some music. Uh, a little tip as well, bring in a like, little Bluetooth speaker as well, because lots of time you'll bring in music on your phone and like the kids are laughing and talking and you just can't hear the music. So a little tip, bring in a nice Bluetooth speaker. It's a really nice investment for, for any temple teacher. Start the music and the bag travels around one circle and the ball travels around the other circle and then stop the music. Whoever's got the bag needs to reach into the the bag pull it out um, and ask uh, you know what's this if it's a picture card or if it's a question ask the question whoever's got the ball must answer and if the person with the ball is struggling their teammates can help it's a real like kind of a, a collaborative task if if that person needs that extra support um, and then uh, the person who's asked the question gives the card to the teacher 
the music starts again, the bag goes around, the ball goes around, and just keep going until there's no more things in the bag. Every three kind of goes, switch over the bag, so both groups are getting the opportunity to ask questions and answer as well, and it's very fast-flowing. It's a wonderful little kind of 10-minute activity, really changes pace in your classroom, and again, it gives them that little um, chance to uh, revisit words or, or um, have an opportunity for production as well if you've got questions in there. I love that. It's like the traditional kind of question answer thing, but it's like everyone is um, involved in it, passing around the bag and passing around the ball, asking questions, answering questions. It's very student centered. Like you are not the, the teacher is not the one asking the questions and the students just answer questions. I think that's kind of a very like traditional way um, that I have done it. And I think a lot of teachers do it too. The teacher asks the questions and the students answer the questions. Uh, but this game kind of like gets away from that and has the students, um, yeah, actually ask the questions themselves to the other students. That's it. And it, you've made a really good point there. Like so many, so many teachers, because they, they kind of grew up in, they were taught in that way. So the teacher kind of asks the question, the students answer. But in the real world, the, the students, you know, sometimes they have to initiate the the conversation they they've got no practice about actually aren't asking questions themselves so it's a really good opportunity to kind of take your like you say take yourself out of it and make it really student-centered mm -hmm. all right so your third activity is a warmer activity called make a match so what is what is that one yeah so this is an absolutely fantastic warmer um you can use this warmer and i have done literally from the ages of three years old all the way up to adult and business so you can um it's it's a fantastic warmer it's a real good go-to and what you need to do is to um make some cards uh, or just on pieces of paper beforehand um, things that match. So you might have, for example, a picture of a hat and then matching it on another piece of paper, you've got the word hat. Let's say you're doing clothes. And then another uh, picture, you might have a sock. And then next to it, you've got another piece, piece of paper that has the word sock and, and so on. You've got matching sets of uh, pieces of paper. And um, make one piece of paper for every student in your class. So if you've got 20 students, make 10 10 of these sets. If you've got an odd number, just give one to yourself to make, make it even. At the start of the class, give each student a piece of paper um, so they can't see it. Tell them not to look. And when they're ready, everyone stands up, looks at their paper, sees what they have, and they have to find their match. So they have to walk around uh, uh, looking. You know, one person's got a hat and they have to look for the person with the word with the hat. So for lower levels, that, that helps with the kind of like reading skills, um, recognizing um, lexical items. Um, for higher levels, you might have kind of the word and the, uh, the meaning. So they have to match the word and the meaning. Um, for very, very small children who are not yet ready to read, you can get one picture and kind of cut it in half. So you might have a hat cut it up the middle and then they have to match the two halves of the hat together and when once the partner has once the partners have found each other they stick together and then you can walk around what do you have oh you know hat well done well done okay what do you have we've got the sock oh well done and it's just a very quick warmer to uh, get students onto the topic review what you may have done in previous classes and just get a bit of energy, get a bit of excitement, just the, the classic warmer. And it's and it works for any level of any age. It's, it's a wonderful uh, warmer. I love that. Yeah, I've done very similar things. Um, but if I um, kind of just want to create a bit more excitement and kind of like level up that activity, I um, get the students, once they find their match, to do rock, scissor, paper with each other. And then whoever wins the rock, scissor, paper can stay standing up and then the other people can sit down and then we kind of have like a rock, scissor, paper showdown until there's like one final person remaining who has all the cards, the stack of cards or whatever, wow. the stack of papers in their hand. Taking it to the next level. That a little bit. Really good. Yeah, if, if everyone is a bit really, really sleepy or, or, or like this one class doesn't love talking or getting up out of their seats, I'm like, okay, let's play this game and everyone you know That's is into it. it and excited so 
Well, children love competition, so it's uh, it's a great way to to kind of um, fuse the both. So they, like you say, that raises the energy, raises the excitement, and really gets a sleepy class ready to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I love any activity where students get up out of their seats and are moving around the class. I think especially for children. Like I know that I personally am in my forties, and I don't even love sitting in a chair. For more than like 10 minutes <laughs> so like I can just imagine little kids you know it's like it's even worse for them because they have way more energy than I do so anything I can yeah. do to help them get up out of their seats once in a while and move around and like talk to different people um it's great I think those kinds of activities yeah well going going back to what we were just saying earlier um your your the students that you have each week they may not have spoken any English you know at all may, maybe a little bit at their public school um throughout the week and they've they're coming back into a class that they might be new to class it's very daunting for them um you know i'm teaching out in asia as you were so it might be kind of the first time that they've had a, a foreign teacher before so activities like this really help to kind of uh, um, get students back up to speed with speaking in a second language or a foreign language. Um, so warmers are so important uh, at the start of any class, but especially with children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. I am all about using um, warmers at the start of every class. And I think it just helps students kind of, I just say activate their brains in English. Um, mm -hmm. Cause yeah, they've just been speaking Korean or Mandarin or, or whatever they're speaking the entire week. And some of them have not spoken a word of English since they left your class the previous week. So like anything yeah. we can do to help students kind of like ease back into it a little bit um, before jumping into like the, the meat of the lesson or, or like the important things the students have to like 100% grasp. Um, if we can kind of ease them into something easier before that, then that's like, we're doing some good work for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Okay, so let's get into the next one, uh, running dictation. Yeah, so this is this is one that your listeners um, are probably uh, aware of or have played, but there are some teachers out there that have never done this before. So if that's you, then um, yeah, you're in for a, a good treat today. So running dictation is basically, um, it's a real classic because it activates all four of the key areas of, of learning English, you, your students will be reading, they'll be speaking, they'll be writing, they'll be listening. So it's a real winner. So what you need to do is get a very short kind of uh, piece of text, depending on the age, it could be as short as a, a sentence, or it could be like um, kind of a, a shorter paragraph. And you need to stick that up on the wall. Put your students together in pairs. One person is writing, and listening and the other person is uh, running and speaking so Jackie let's say I'm working with you you'll be sitting there uh, writing uh, the text will be on the wall I need to run and read the first kind of sentence or the first few words of a sentence of uh, what has been stuck on the wall the text that's been put on the wall try to memorize it run back and then I need to speak. I need to, to relay the sentence I've just read to you. You need to listen to me speaking and then you need to write it down. Um, you might need to uh, ask um, for it to be repeated and then in that, oh, I can't remember, I need to run back. So I know, I know run back, revisit the text again, read it again. Uh, lots of like receptive skills are being used. I have to run over then I'd turn that receptive skills into productive skills by saying what was on. You're listening. So, you know, you're using your receptive skills now by listening to me. And then you're turning that into production by writing. And then so this, you are slowly transferring the text that's from the wall onto paper. Now, the kids love to run um, more than they do to write. So kind of every two minutes or every minute or so, just shout change. And then the partners change over and just keep going until uh, everyone has finished writing the text. It's it's fun. Um, again, it uses um, productive skills and receptive skills. And it's a fantastic way to 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 blend blend it all in. And if you're ever um, doing reading practice or have a, a piece of text in your textbook with younger learners, you can always use this. 
A quick tip though, um, if you are doing this, make sure the text is above head height, because if you're teaching in like a smaller room with lots of kids, you might have kind of seven or eight children all around the text and the kids at the back can't see. Mm. So just put the text maybe like a one or two feet above eye level and then everyone is able to see the text so that make sure the text is big enough make sure you print it out big enough to be able to read kind of two or three meters back and actually test that yourself before class consider you know can kids read this um so have a little bit of a try one as well I love running dictation and I use it in basically all my classes probably like at least a couple times um, throughout the semester. But one thing that I do, I taught mostly university students, um, was that I would like find dialogues or conversations between two people. And then each like utterance, so like each time someone in that conversation said a sentence or two or whatever it was, I would cut it out onto its own strip of paper. And then I would put the various papers at various points around the classroom. So I'd maybe have like 10 or 12 um different like sentences they were all different around mm -hmm. the class so they'd have to go to various places and then uh the procedure was the same as yours but then at the end once they had like all 10 or all 12 or however many they would have to put the conversation into the correct order so that just kind of like took it um it was quite difficult actually <laughs> i think to get down like all of those sentences plus put it into like a good conversation that actually made sense. Yes. Um, so kids, that might be a little bit too difficult, but for adults, definitely, that's kind of the next level of that activity. Yeah, I think it would definitely go for older older children, or or you could you could do the same theme, but maybe just like a very very quick dialogue, with maybe like um, four sentences or something. And actually, the benefit of doing that is that. Um, you're not having lots of children running to one point, mm -hmm. which can kind of cause problems. Kids are running forwards and they're running backwards. You have to kind of really stay on your toes to make sure kids don't run into each other. Um, but yeah, doing it like that, you've got different, you've got different points of interest. And also you can extend the activity because the way that I've just explained it there, at the end of it, I mean, you can do like a quick kind of feedback session, but with your idea, you can really extend it and then um, have students uh, practicing the dialogue together and then have a, a nice production stage at the end as well. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. All right, so um, your final activity is the production line. So what is that one all about? Yeah, so um, here in China, we have uh, something called WeChat, and uh, there's uh, all, everyone in China uses WeChat, and we um, there's lots of chat groups. It's really good, actually. You've got these different um, different interest groups on WeChat, and there's tons of um, TEFL teachers um, that use WeChat. And we ran a WeChat uh, competition to come up with some of the best ideas for flashcard games. And the game that won it actually um, was, was this idea. And this was from an Australian teacher um, and he worked in the training school. And um, he said the, the problem with lots of flashcard games, it, they're kind of like you're very high energy, you're revisiting vocab, but they're not often used um, to really make it really kind of learner centers and to allow students to construct their own sentences and make it very kind of like learner centered and um, oh, how can I, well, but, well, I'll just explain what it is, I guess. Like sure. basically it's called a production line. So um, what you have, you this takes a little bit more kind of preparation, but it's, it's really well worth it. So on one station, you might have um, the start of a sentence, for example, like I like or I want, um, can I have, uh, please give me. And you've got um, kind of you printed out laminated um, start of a sentence on a different table on station two, you might have some numbers, you know, one or two, or five, or whatever. On station three, you've got uh, different adjectives of appearance. You might have a big, um, small, you know, tall, heavy, or whatever. On station four, you might have flashcards of different colors. So you've got a, a red flashcard, a green flashcard, a blue flashcard. 
And on station five, you've got your target vocabulary. And what the students do, um, they literally form a line and walk along each station and they memorize what they want. So from the first station, they might think, right, I want, and then they move to the next station, which is numbers. They might, um, I want five, and then they move to station three, which is like adjectives of appearance. Uh, I want five big, and then they move to the um, fourth station, um, which is color. Um, um, kids have like, I want five big, and the next one is colors, uh, blue, and then they move to the last one, uh, which is your target vocabulary, shoes, just for example. So I want five big shoes, and then they go to the teacher and they must say the sentence that they've created themselves in their own head to you. And you're like, yeah, great, give them a high five and they rejoin the line. And each time they go along, they're, they're creating, they're constructing their own sentences, which are personalized to them. And you just keep going and, and for, you know, five, six, seven minutes. And uh, the this teacher said the kids love it. They just want to keep going around and around and around. And it's a meaningful activity. And I think that's the key when you're teaching children. It's the children love to play games, but you must make sure two things that it's it's meaningful. And number two, it's worthwhile. It's worth their time doing so many teachers kind of. Um, they, they fall into the habit of playing games for a little bit too long, kind of uh, running down the clock. I've written articles about this, like running, never just run down the clock. Um, make sure that each second, each minute that you have with your students, are, it's worth their time. Make sure that it's meaningful and, it, and it's relevant to your learner. That activity sounds amazing. And I actually have some regret about not teaching kids right now because I think I would love to do that game in my class. Um, that's actually, I've never heard of that. And it's um, it sounds amazing. And I can just see that students, even like university students that I taught, I think probably couldn't get enough of that. Um, it just sounds, it sounds great. And it's like reading, making good sentences, speaking, it kind of covers like so many things and it's personalized. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's so good. And it gets to the very heart of language, you know, because when your students, you're, you're, you're teaching your students so that in the real world, they're able to, to speak English and um, to uh, take conversations in any kind of directions as, you know, as we do. Mm -hmm. And by doing something like this, your students, students are personalizing it, it's highly motivating as well. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're constructing the language in their, in their heads. They're not just like repeating, they're really making their own language of what they want to say. And they're coming to tell you, you give them that high five, that encouragement, and then they rejoin the line. And it's, uh, yeah, it was the winner of, of the flashcard competition that we ran. All right, well, thank you so much for sharing your top five activities for young children. Um, with us. Um, so if people want to find you online, where, where can they go? Yeah, so um, you can follow the YouTube channel. Uh, just look for Teffel Lemon on YouTube. We've got a website. Um, it's teffellemon.com. It's got tons of free activities um, for teachers to find on there. And um, if you are looking to do Teffel training, uh, we offer a higher certificate of TESOL, which is teffellemoncourses.com. All right. Thank you so much um, for all your helpful tips. And I'm sure our listeners will definitely appreciate, um, yeah, going into class no next week and trying these things out. Uh, so thanks so much, everyone. And the, all the podcast info, you can find at eslactivities.org slash podcast. All right. Thanks again, Stuart. And I will chat with you later. Cheers, Jackie.